Just a few things about Click Meeting so you know how to get along with everything. We've got a chat box right below the big yellow Go Beyond the Badge presentation. So you are welcome to just enter some stuff in there. We'd love to know where you guys are joining from. So if you just chat in there and tell us where you are in the world, that would be great. You can also um, Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat box. I will be monitoring that and I will do everything I can to flag the presenters and let them know that you are asking any questions. So I will turn this over to Nina and Chris. Hey everybody, um, thanks for joining us today. I'm Nina Brevner, an account director um, at Kineo and um, here to kind of share credentialing and digital badging from a learn tech perspective. And I'm joined here today by. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Chris Kirks. So I'm managing director of Digital Me, which is a sitting guild group business. So obviously uh, Nina and I presenting here is kind of part of the sitting guild group and hopefully going to kind of take you through um, what we're seeing is a kind of really um, impactful um, innovation within the sector that I think brings the best of my traditional world, which used to be qualifications and awarding body into the kind of much more the L&D space and kind of agile responsive um, support for businesses in, in building the talent pipeline. Brilliant. So what have we got on today? Um, just run through the introductions. We're going to talk to you a little bit about what credentialing is. Um, we're going to go through why credentialing is different um, from badging, um, how does credentialing help businesses, what does it mean to sectors, and there's a little bit of um, looking into the future, what we would aspire to um, as part of this solution um, to aid sectors moving forward. Um, what does this mean to skills development, so Chris is going to show some fantastic case studies that show where we've enabled skills development um, using the solution. And then we're going to bring it all to life with a demo of the platform Credly, which then enables all of this visionary stuff to happen as part of your day-to-day -day business as usual. Um, so please, as you want, um, ask questions as you go along. Kelsey's going to be monitoring um, for questions. If they're most relevant to what we're talking about at that moment in time, Kelsey will stop us and we can respond to your questions as we go. If not, she'll be storing them up for the end and we'll have a dedicated Q&A session for you. But just to get the session nice and warmed up, we'd like to know from you guys, do any of you use um, badges at the moment? And for what reason do you use badges inside um, your business? So please, um, down to the chat area, start popping your answers in. Oh, we're doing a poll. I beg your pardon. I'm going to take that back. I've just mm. been told off by Kelsey. It's a poll. Mm. <laughs> so Kelsey's going to bring the poll up now. So if you'd like to respond to that by letting us know, do you use badges at the moment? And if so, for what reason? Okay, so we're going to move on for that, but please keep popping stuff into the poll or into the chair as we um, move on to the next slide. I can see that some of you have got sound issues there. Sorry to hear that. Hopefully, um, Kelsey might be able to guide you through any problems we've got as we go through the presentation. Apologies, guys. We seem to have a bit of a slowdown on the system here in bringing the slides back up. Oh, don't you just love technology? Yeah. <laughs> no. So, Kelsey, can you feed back to us a little bit about what we've seen coming through on the chat area in the poll? So we had a few things come through. We've got people interested in gamification. I flashed up the results for just a moment, but it looks like I can't keep them up for very long. This is a new webinar tool, mm. sadly. <laughs> we are still working through the 
the technicalities of it, but it also looks like none at the moment. Um, we've got a big thing more about clients that want to offer qualifications. Okay. And there was a fee for gamification compliance. I think every single one had a little, a little bit, bit of, of all of them. So that's really interesting. And hopefully, as we go through the um, presentation, we'll be able to tick some of those bits off for you around uh, where credentialing can lie within each of those areas. So thanks for the feedback, guys. Um, so over to Chris for the moment to talk to you a little bit about what credentialing is. Yeah. So what we'll start with really is before we kind of get in, what's the difference between that and and badges, which are, is probably where most of you have been operating in the present, is really to say that you know a credential is an an objective third party kind of recognition of someone's achievement, and by making it digital. Um, we can create something that's kind of far more visual, engaging. Um, it's something that can be universal um, by using a, a common standard, and we use the, the Missouri Open Badge standard. Because it's built in that kind of standard that's kind of carefully managed and, and undertaken, it's, it's, it's a safe and secure form of recognition. It's given to an individual. It can't then be copied or faked. You know, it very much is something that um, ensures that you can trust when you then validate that credential. Because they're digital and, and kind of move you far beyond traditional formats for kind of communication achievement, like a paper certificate, um, they can just contain so much data. And within that data, you can really build a rich understanding of what someone's done. You can bake in evidence. You can bake in testimonials. You can really bring to life what someone has achieved. And actually what that allows for is greater differentiation between the different sorts of credentials that people can earn. And we'll show you how, you know, as, as this becomes more and more popular, it can cover just such a greater range of achievements um, than, than other formats can. Um, obviously, it's, it's very shareable. You can verify a click of a button online. Um, as those credentials are shared, they're trackable, and we'll bring that to life at the end as, you, as we create a credential together. And in that great modern way, because in that digital format, you know, then can adapt to machine learning, they can jet to Google Analytics and all the tracking and reporting that goes with it, you can make people far more discoverable, you can connect more easily, and it just makes them very portable. So this gives so many advantages over what we call traditional formats of communicating achievement. So where we're going to now talk really as, as credential kind of steps beyond what people may be using badges within closed systems. There's just such a great opportunity for the digital credential connect the issuer, and that could be any form of you know traditional education establishment and employer themselves, a professional body or association, to the earner. Um, beyond that moment in the time they were taking the program on the learning and development activity and actually start to connect them through to the opportunities. Because digital credentials are all about what happens to the credential once they've been earned. It's about empowering the individual to then use them beyond their system they earned it in, um, whether that was a learning management system or another badging platform. And it's really allowing the earner to connect to opportunities. So how they can embed that within application forms, put it in within their LinkedIn profile, allowing people to make them more discoverable online and on the web. And also what we see is this opportunity for employers to get a much better macro view of their workforce and that ability to see all the talent in their organization helps them better connect those individuals to the right projects and programs and promotion and all sorts of talent pipelines. So by making that very portable credential, we can bring the issue in much closer to the opportunity. And by changing the conversation between the two, we can make it a much more rapid and agile responsive system. So the people who are demanding certain skills can very quickly articulate to the issues, these are the skills we need to see. And they, they can re redefine their learning development programs to ensure credentials being a better meet the need of the people receiving them. And you just create this really great virtuous circle that I think really um, enhances how quickly we can match the talent that's needed with the, the talent that already exists or you need to go and recruit for any business. Um, and just to kind of bring that to life um, is this great ability for digicultures to showcase trust in so many different locations. Um, and Neen will talk a little bit about the sorts of areas, but 
whether you know you live your life in LinkedIn and you're all about networking on there, how you can build trust into your achievements there. You can embed credentials in any form of digital presence. So that's whether it's a web page, an email signature, a blog page you might have. Again, you can build greater trust and understanding what you can do. And what certainly Digital Me does with Credly is, is really provide that lifelong profile for the individual. So no matter where credentials are earned, multiple learning management systems, online activity, what you may do with a professional body, what you did in the past, they can all live in one space, a bit like a bank account. So the ability for you to then carefully manage that and select where you want to be seen across the web. And that's really, as we talk about, you know, what's different between a badge, which is probably something that's quite short term, something that's about living in a system to incentivize and engage people. This is about creating credentials that someone really wants to show to the wider world. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more detail as we go through. So I'd like to sort of open up a little bit of a discussion um, in the forum, just to get a bit of feedback from people. Um, one of the things that we see huge amounts of value in behind credentialing is the ability to recognise skills that at present go quite frequently unrecognised inside the work environment. Um, if I use myself as an example, I, I don't have any formal qualifications like degrees or, or college, but I do have 15 years worth of experience in the same sector. And had credentialing been available from the beginning, it would have opened up the opportunity for people like myself to have those skills recognised over the period um, of a career. I also think that there are points in people's careers where people desire an opportunity to actually validate what they know. So is what we know real or is it something that we just leverage day in, day out as part of our jobs? And credentialing really opens up that opportunity for people to curate what their career looks like based on real skills um, day in, day out. So I'd love to see coming through on the chat forum how you guys feel about this. Do you find either through a personal experience or through the job that you do at work that you find people are often talking to you about the fact that I wish that their skills were being recognized for what they do day in, day out. And that could be from being a good salesperson, a good negotiator, excellent at customer service. Maybe they have um, a fantastic attention to detail. All these things are contributors to whatever might be your next career, your next job move, etc. But they're things that are often not recognized. So we'd love to see you chatting away about this um, to see whether you feel that it really does exist um, for yourselves as well. So moving on um, to the next section. Um, moving on to the next section, we're just going to cover off about um, uh, credentialing and badging. I'm going to leave Chris to talk to you through around what the difference is around credentialing um, inside the vocational space these badging um, inside the learn tech yeah. area. Yeah. Um, so certainly looking at the early chat discussion, obviously where a lot of you um, seem to be using badging was within the world of kind of probably LMS, where badging has obviously become a trend to incentivize and engage people and to gamify learning, you know, a, a fairly informal piece of recognition, which very simply and easily helps, you know, people to kind of be rewarded for their progression through content and just make it a bit more of a fun experience. Um, obviously, a lot of people use it in things like product training, um, you know, like to touch um, pieces of learning. Where the world I come from is kind of the world of qualifications and the system for developing a qualification tends to focus on building um, recognition for long formal pieces of training or development and that's often useful um, but as you many of you will have been through a degree or or been through a, an MVQ type qualification it's often the skills that people um, achieve that want to be demonstrated and seen by the employer not necessarily the overarching qualification and what credentialing allows us to do is provide a process for the I guess constant ability to recognize achievements large and small, but most importantly communicate those in a really trusted, verifiable way. 
And I think there's some really interesting points here, Chris, because when we, and I know that you joined us at Learning Technologies, and when you look at, walk around the Learning Technologies event, there's a lot of conversation around badging mm. inside our sector. But actually, most of the time, what we're seeing is people talking about badging in the context of being gamified on a leaderboard, yeah. rewarding against a particular module mm. or a particular topic. And what we're offering here is the, is the ability to move that beyond that and say actually this isn't just about gamification this is actually about recognition all the way through your day-to-day -day work experience and that really lifts it up a level from what from what we're used to seeing inside our sector itself definitely so what badging can be in its simplest format is the digital communication of traditional certification mm -hmm. and that will happen so we'll show you a case study where um, ILM, you know, the awarding body around leadership and management, have already started to communicate their unit achievement and their full certification achievement by issuing someone a badge, which is obviously a digital credential. But where they want to take it is to say there are just so many different things you will learn on the job, mm -hmm. um, beyond the qualification, which actually you can start to recognise through a credential as well. So. Where we see credentialing going is it's that ability across a whole lifetime to what we call frame the skills you want to see, the ability then to capture those, as we said, in a trusted, reliable way that conveys meaning and understanding to the person who's going to receive that credential, um, and then actually then communicate that in the modern digital way that we all live our learning. I mean, I would imagine. 99% of us on this call now have a LinkedIn profile and actively mm -hmm. use that system. Many of us will probably have a Twitter account, a personal blog post, and we're all using those on for networking. Um, we use that networking to obviously promote ourselves both internally within the businesses we work for, externally in terms of when we want to move jobs. And when we think of the CV and other tools for when we want to, I guess, communicate our achievements, the ability to embed in them greater trust, so it's not just me saying I can do this, but someone has objectively come in reviewed my achievements, um, my skills, okay. my performance, um, and I can put that on my CV, it just brings that trust and it will make people stand out. So the issuer can be differentiated but also the earner themselves. And I think it's really important that we're not saying that badging doesn't still have a place mm. inside the learning spectrum. So, and actually Chris and I were talking about this just before the webinar, you know, we're we're looking to integrate credentialing in with Tatara as a platform mm. and Tatara already has a badging solution and we were talking about how do we cater for credentialing vis badging and we very much see it as, you know, the badging inside Tatara mm. for us plays a massive role in still being able to push stuff out to leaderboards, being able to recognise perhaps non-transferable knowledge or skills that you may acquire inside a business, but using credentialing for that stuff that is more transferable um, and stays with you for the lifetime of your career. So th there's a place for both of them. Absolutely. And it's that ability to, for, I think, all partners and stakeholders, so the earner of some form of credential, the issue who's often the person obviously developing that person and the people who really want to understand the skills of that individual to come together and design that together and it's mm. a really collaborative approach that ensures that we can create much more rapid agile responsive recognition systems that takes account of all the work that's done within kind of an e-learning world within the classroom on the job all of that can be recognized across a, a question by using badging and digital credentialing together mm -hmm. So um, just to sort of take you through what this means, we've put together this strap line, um, which is about making sure that you can see every skill. Um, and we see the C part as, as making sure that things are shareable, that there's recognition, that we can celebrate people's successes as part of making that visible, um, that we're recognizing capability and performance and providing transparency around that and that we're generating a much greater understanding of what it is that people are capable of doing and making sure that that's well validated and robust alongside it. We see that this is about um, ensuring that we recognize uniqueness, whether that is large or small, formal or informal, regulated or unregulated, old or new, whether it's progressive, 
whether it's about milestones and Chris is going to take you through some excellent case studies that show you that kind of progression and milestone um, approach to credentialing and, and making sure that we've got those achievements um, well logged. And also acknowledging that this isn't necessarily tied to a specific skill set. So often we will recognize technical skills or we will recognize a particular competence in something. But actually it goes beyond that. There's a, the human skills that we do day in, day out, which are actually really critical. It's recognizing that some skills are in fact a profession. So leadership and management um, requires you know, should have good recognition in both its values, its behaviours, the competency levels that it requires as well. We also see this as an important part of engagement and motivation um, and driving passion in people's own performance and the skills that they're developing and what that means to them and their career journey and the performance that underlines it. So we're going to open up another poll. Fingers crossed, this one's a little bit more <laughs> easier to run for Kelsey than the last one. Um, but so I'm going to run a poll. Um, do you have an LMS with any badging or credentialing capability at the moment? Um, we'd love to know about that. Um, and if you want to follow that up in the chat thing around what you do have, that would also be um, greatly appreciated too. Yeah. And, and as you're doing that, I've, I'm seeing some of the questions coming through. We're going to get into some practical case studies of kind of where this is being applied now, which will hopefully um, start to bring it to life a little bit more. So we'll give you a few minutes just to respond and then uh, see where we are after that. Okay, shall we uh, move on, Kelsey? All oh, fingers, because oh, that's better. It stayed up this time. Excellent. So we've got quite a few people who have got some existing capability um, around badging and credentialing. Can we see in the chat, has anybody indicated what it is that they're getting that from at all? Do you have any of that, Kelsey? No, that was the continuing questions. Which that's okay. I yeah. said we'd be addressing in a minute. Brilliant. That's yeah. great stuff. Excellent. So we'll just get the presentation back up again for you. Wait, that was going back to the beginning, I see. Yeah. Sorry guys, bear with us while it's just loading up the right slide. Speedy Gondor. Okay, whilst we're waiting for that to load, we'll start talking you through um, the next lot. So the, well, you can see it on your end. Brilliant. That's yeah. great news. Um, okay, so um, what we want to talk to you about is the business benefits. As Chris starts to go into the case studies, we'll really explore what it means to the individual. But we think it's really important that you also probably talk about the benefits that it holds um, across the business. Um, so micro recognition and aggregation, as some of you may be aware on the call, micro learning is very much a hot topic in our sector at the moment, enabling bite sized bits of learning to be curated into journeys or to be accessed um, sporadically as part of performance support tools, whatever that might be. And one of the things we have to be aware of as we sort of move into the space of micro learning is thinking about how that's recognized and so making sure that we don't lose sight of recognizing the micro behaviors and skills that people acquire as they go through that experience. Now that could be that they're going through a more linear path that's got micro content built into it. That's much easier. You can put a, a, a wider recognition um, and credential against that entire program. But what if over an extended period of time, people are sporadically interacting um, with micro bits of modules? So they might do something in facilitation 12 months later, they might do something in giving good feedback. And when you collate those over a period of time, they ultimately lead to being a good coach or a good leader. So it's about being able to recognize micro skills and behaviors, but also being able to curate those into something larger 
further down the line and Chris has got some great case studies for that um, further on. Um, succession planning and talent matching and being able to use the analytics built into Credly that we'll walk you through later really opens up that opportunity for you to be able to see what skills do you already hold within your business and how you can then utilize those as part of your succession planning and talent matching. Um, it's really good for extended enterprise. We've got some fantastic examples um, with organizations like Samsung where credentialing and badges is being used as a way of recognizing the adoption of knowledge and skills for an audience that you have no remit over. So for an organization like Samsung where their remit are um, people like um, 3 or Vodafone, they're not staff they have a direct remit over and also they're competing against their other um, competitors such as people like Apple. So it's ideal for them that they can provide a robust recognition for the knowledge and skills that people are investing in um, via Samsung. Um, Self-development and engagement. So we know that um, one of the big topics of think, conversations coming back from our customers is all about how do we engage people, how do we incentivize them to be more engaged in their personal performance. Um, and their objectives throughout the lifetime of their career? How do they incentivize them to do the learning that might not also have a direct relationship to their personal objectives? And this is a really nice, if we can build up an environment where people are recognized for all the things that they learn and do, we hope that then that will be underpinned by them feeling more incentivized and more motivated towards their own learning experiences. Um, we know in a pressured world that we're in at the moment, Businesses have much um, higher turnover, so people tend to leave within three to seven years of being in an organization. We know that um, businesses need to move incredibly fast with the peaks and troughs of what's happening in their sectors and markets and responding to the demands of their customers. We also know that there's a need for people to be able to hit the ground running as quickly as possible. So businesses want to see the investment in their staff paid off as quickly as possible by seeing them being able to invest what they've been taught back into the business. And we see an opportunity there to, um, if we can move, and we're going to talk a little bit about this later when we talk about sectors, but if we can, where the skills become more transferable because you can see what people have acquired under different organizations, you can make better use of those skills and behaviors and get people up and running a lot, lot quicker inside your organizations. The big one that always makes people smile when we bring this up talking to customers is the investors and in people. Chris mentioned earlier about the ability to publicly advertise um, your skills and behaviors and credentials that you've received um, and that those can be done via your social sites with LinkedIn. You can put them onto the footers of your emails, etc. And actually, because the badges are branded to you as a business, this isn't just about the individual, but it's also ability for you to market yourself as an investor in people. And that's a really good um, output for yourselves. Um, and Chris is going to give you a nice case study, actually, around the Ambersam Awards and what that's meant to them publicly. Yeah, so, I mean, just going through the questions, I'll try and address, by talking through this kind of one example, some of the kind of things that come up. So. Uh, the Ampersand Awards is actually an internal um, awards program within the Sitting Guilds Group. So the Sitting Guilds Group contains about 1,300 people in total. And we all work towards three core values. And those values are evaluation, uh, sorry, imagination, integrity, and leadership. And our core purpose as a brand is obviously being pioneers in skills development. And what the group has always struggled to do is to articulate in a simple way what those values mean and for then people to be recognized for displaying those values so a judging process was set up where people could be nominated but to do that what the credential allowed um sitting those group to do was clearly within the credential to articulate to someone hoping to earn that what it means to live that value and it becomes a very simple way to effectively promote what you're looking to achieve. It then creates a system where people can, once they meet that standard, be easily recognized. But the real value for the individual and for um, the sitting deals group is what that then means once that credential is earned in the world we live in outside our organization. So I actually connect with people in the sitting deal group more on LinkedIn than I do with any internal system. And actually when people share their credentials, Often the people are going to see it is the people you work with on a daily basis and getting that recognition is hugely um, rewarding and motivating and we'll show you some really 
um, compiling stats on that. What the technology allows us now to do is that, like you said, you can embed that within LinkedIn, you can share it on a, a Twitter feed, you can embed it in emails, et etc. What the technology then allows Sitting Girls Group to do is track where their brand was seen and control how their brand is seen in relation to their employer value proposition. So in this example, for example, you know, you've got someone who shared it on LinkedIn, you know, you've got 23 likes, seven comments. The system can track all of that activity and then report that back to the business. So for very little investment, you're talking a couple of days work, hardly any technology cost, Sitting Guilds Group had well over 100,000 badge interactions by people sharing their credentials. It becomes this effectively free viral marketing tool, which benefits the individual, which is great, but it also benefits the issuer. And that's where we see the proposition being really, really compelling. And when we look at what that actually um, means for a business in terms of, you know, the business benefit, um, it's all about increasing employer engagement, you know, the impact of employee recognition increases customer satisfaction. There's a direct correlation to between increased productivity, employee retention and increased revenue. So for what is in your whole L&D spend and budget a relatively low investment recognition systems where you really are giving that external and internal recognition to a visual, not just badging a bit of activity, does drive clear business benefit. And we'll go on to a few other case studies where that's having an impact as well. Brilliant. So um, on to our next poll. Um, so what do you see being the greatest opportunity for um, your business? So we would like to understand from the little bit that you've learned so far, mm -hmm. what do you see being that greatest opportunity for you or your business? And if you don't see an opportunity yet, it gives us a nice challenge to make yes. sure there is one by the end of the webinar. So we'll give you a few minutes just to respond to that and then um, we'll have a look at what you've come up with. Mm. Yeah, you can either type this in the comments or answer in the poll, it's fine, mm. whichever one, because this mm. is an open-ended question. Yeah. Just having a look at what's coming up on the screen, um, what have we got from Sharon there? Let's see how this would be good for people. And be... Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Yep, absolutely fair point there, Sharon. Um, Kevin, we can see your comment there about the um, that most of the people you interact with are possibly unemployed. Um, actually, we've got a nice case study about that coming up next, so hold that thought and hopefully some of that will will get cleared up through that case study for you. Yeah. And then I'll be closing the poll in about 30 seconds. So if you're typing, you might lose what you were typing. So give yourself about 30 seconds to finish up or enter it in the chat. So Nick, you're saying about forming subject specific skilled teams. I think that's a really interesting point as well. Actually, you know, I can see that really working across a business as well. You can identify actually where those skills sit outside of one single team. And then if you needed to bring those people together for a particular project, you've got that visibility. And then I am just sharing the results now from the report. I think you might be able to yeah, share the details. This is amazing. There's another point there from Kevin around the ability to actually measure the impact on it. So how many people have interacted with that credential um, and the effect that that's had on them and the workplace. That's really interesting. Yeah, we had a few people say things like Emma is looking for more awareness of skills within the team and leveraging those skills, a badge of honor, achievement healthy internal competition yeah. for external clients. So she's looking at internal and both external. 
So, you know, Chris actually shared an example with us a few months ago of an organisation that uses credentialing in that context for um, you know, a bit of healthy competition. They publish their badges onto, onto their SharePoint. Um, they have a, a, a kind of an academy set of learning that they go through for the sales team. Um, and rather than sort of mandating that learning, they actually sort of ignite people to do more of the academy learning by showing you know, someone else has done six of the modules rather than three, and those are then presented using the badges onto onto the SharePoint, and, and that really motivates people, especially when they see the person with the greatest amount of training completion is also the person with the highest sales in that context. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of very uh, quickly take you kind of through, which I think is the challenge facing us all at the moment, is really what to me this is about is a digitization digitization trend so you know formal qualifications are not going to go away but when we look at the world now and kind of all those mega trends that are existing how the hell are we all going to keep pace with that as individuals what we learn in our formal education at 14 through to 18 what we may or may not have learned at university if we go you know what that will be irrelevant in five years time because the demands placed on us by Globalization, digitization just means the skills, the behaviors we need are going to constantly change. So where credential, I think, plays the role is, do you know what? It may not at times be as robust as a big formal degree program, but do you know what? A de degree program is not going to be able to train all the rapid changes in skills that we're going to need because we can't afford to pay for it. But what we can do is learn on the job and have recognition of what we learn on the job. And that's really... Um, why for me credentialing is so important because what I want to be able to see is, you know, I run a business of 22 people, I'm really important that I have the right technical skills, but you know what, if someone doesn't have, have them, I'll train them. You know, I have a, a team of developers who are working in mostly in .NET, but you know what, at some point they're probably going to have to change the programming language they use to remain kind of in that survival of the fittest. Where I also want to get a real indication when I'm recruiting people is what are their natural preferences? What, what drives them? What drives their behaviors? Are they likely to adapt and develop new skills? And most importantly, I want to see what people are like on the job, their working habits, and that's really their behaviors. Now, a traditional CV, a one hour interview does not give me a trusted view of those three things. What credentialing allows is to communicate to me if I was reviewing that person, a real understanding of who's made that judgment, how that person was assessed against certain criteria and evidence. And that allows me to form an opinion of whether I think they do or don't. And what we need to do with credentialing is make sure it's, it's really a um, kind of valid, reliable, but really viable approach where we actually look at different forms of assessment to make that judgment, um, which allows us then to create this richer picture of all those things. I think there's a really, and that sort of covers off part of what um, Tricia Robinson and mm. and Martin have been chatting about in in the forum. There is that um, we I can absolutely see the point about you'd have to be very careful about how this is being validating, so you mm. don't just end up with a really long set of um, skills. Yeah. I mean, we designed a program re recently for frontline leaders um, in collaboration with mm. one of our other sister companies, the Oxford Group. And what's very interesting about that is validation takes place on multiple levels. Mm. So there's diagnostics that are sort of identifying what your present capability is and how much that capability has progressed. You've got manager sign off, which is saying, I've asked you to learn about facilitation skills. I've now asked you to go into a meeting and carry out those facilitation skills. And I'm now able to say, you are in fact fulfilling that skill. And so I'm gonna sign it off. But also there's an added layer which is also peer validation so that then that way there's a collective view from your peers about actually are you showing that behavior or displaying that skill day in day out and using that as a method of validation as well so across an organization it can be formal validation like you see in yeah. your world chris um in in the vocational sense but also there's all this validation that we can put in place and that has to be considered as part of that wider learning design yeah. that we do at program yeah. level and, and by making these credentials digital we build in things like the ability to revoke credentials so mm -hmm. someone may not display those behaviors well actually i want to then take back that recognition yeah you can time bound them so you actually force people to continually 
review and renew their mm -hmm. um, competence and capabilities. It just allows us to do so much more than we could before. What I'm now going to run through is kind of a, a real practical position. This is actually, um, you know, we're in Brighton today, so it's just down the road um, in Sussex Down College, and they cover the areas of kind of Eastbourne, Hastings, Lewis, that sort of area. And actually, most of the employers in that area, 90, 95% are small, medium enterprises. And a lot of actually the jobs, obviously being around the coast, are actually quite um, seasonal related. And what Sussex Downs are struggling with, they were having difficulty, although they were teaching great skills, having the ability for the students to communicate those skills to small, medium enterprises. And the college wasn't having a dialogue with their local community, with the local council. They used digital credentialing as a way to say, actually, we're going to design credentials which employers want to see in the skills we develop. And what when an individual has demonstrated they have that skill, can evidence it, that when they turn up on an interview, they can actually talk about it in the language that the employer is going to understand. And the way that um, kind of process works is, you know, Sussex Downs now have a huge directory of skills and you can apply this to a business context as well. These skills are about self-development. They're not actually things that the learner has to do in the classroom. They have to go and evidence those as they go along the, in their programs. Um, these skills are constantly reviewed with local employers. So as employers say, you know, someone turned up last week and I was really looking for this one specific thing, but they could not communicate it. They can go back to the college next month and say, you really need to be ensuring your students come to me and can demonstrate they can do this. And what they've started to do, and they've got 5,000 students now in this programme, is create this local currency of skills. And think of that in the business context as well as a, a you know, a, a community college. You say, actually, we can create an agile, rapid, responsive system that allows the college to do what employers want, and it allows the individual to communicate that in a way that employers can understand. Because the biggest barrier to a lot of employment is a language barrier mm. it's not actually a, an intrinsic I don't have the skills yeah um, so we'll rush through and you know if people want more information we can kind of share more data with case studies because we do want to get on to just covering, covering a few off so where we now have our clear case studies of how we can engage young people um, in career inspiration and navigation I'll talk about Siemens case study in a second where Siemens are looking at engaging their future talent pipeline around the behaviors they want to see, not necessarily the technical skills. We can talk about how credentials are used specifically within the world of apprenticeships, which I'm sure is high on everyone's agenda, and how do we work in this new world of employee levy to ensure that businesses get real business return on their investment there, because just because you're getting some levy money does not mean you're not going to get business impact if you don't do it right. But where I got frustrated with the qualification system that often stopped at when public funding runs out is to say we can recognize on the job success and getting people ready for that promotion um, in a different way. And we'll talk a little bit about some uh, an ILM example as we go through. So I'll just quickly in the next kind of five minutes run through a few more case studies. And then what I'd like to do is just finish on building a badge that we, you will all be able to claim for taking part of that webinar that will hopefully just show actually how easy this can be the quality of a credential is about the effort you put into defining the standard and the assessment and quality chance that goes with it. What this is about is making the communication that really simple and easy as we go through. So just to kind of how I continue to have that point, the skills we need to see today probably aren't on most formal education courses and training programmes. I know a number of employers will be doing something around those skills, but you know what, the skills we even we need today that aren't being taught are different to the skills we need in five years time. And that's where I think credentialing is so important. So where an organisation like Siemens have jumped on this is saying, if we're going to have the right talent in 2025, it's no point waiting for 2025, hoping the education system and parents can educate their children to know what they need to learn, and the behaviours that are going to make them successful in a future workplace. So what we worked with Siemens on is to take their core characteristics, values, behaviours, whatever you want to call them, and convert those into a set of credentials that students can learn in school, 
that are communicating a language they're going to understand. You know, most 10 year olds won't really understand what curious means, but we can create a badge around a project around sustainability um, and use language in terms of to get them to learn and engage and evidence that. That then allows Siemens to build a relationship. They can then continue to build that relationship as they get to making their GCSE choices, as they get to make their um, further education choices, and then right through to the point of recruitment, they have this line of credentials that allows the individual to know what Siemens are looking for. And what they're specifically driving this is to help teachers know what to teach. So actually they're sitting alongside national curriculum, but making it much more ready for the workplace. And that's got great CSR benefit for Siemens, but it's a business decision. It's about ensuring that they do have the right talent, certainly when you think of women in STEM, that they're getting to people at the right age, knowing how they can influence some of those education choices that will drive through. Um, another example, this is from within the Sitting Guilds group. For those of you who know about the new apprenticeship standards, the traditional way of knowing someone had reached competency in their apprenticeship was a qualification. Well, now that's moved to a endpoint assessment with the removal in many cases of the qualification that existed. So what this provides an opportunity for organisations to say, do you know what, we need to credential the key gateways for someone going through an apprenticeship and recognise their skills development along the way. But they each feed into a gateway, you need the four to go through gate one, gateway one to gateway two. They can then look to say, we need to evidence the behaviours that go through that. And again, these are all built on national standards. So that's something, again, that can be embedded clearly in the badge and communicated is what standard nationally or internationally or wherever that is they're matched oh, to. Actually, it's the business standards yes. as well. I think this model works perfectly well, even just with a, a, a non-national mm. program um, that represents the standards of the business um, kind of thing. And, and that's a really nice yeah. mirror for that. Yeah, and what we did with some of the piloting early on um, with the automotive trailblazer, so a big employer like Jaguar said, but we want some differentiated behaviours in our apprentices that are different to the national standard we totally support, but we need to have that differentiation where that credential allows you to have national standards, but also local differentiation, which is going to enable a brand to really ensure that they get the, the talent they need. Um, this is still my favourite case study. And what I want you to think of this is really continuing professional development. When you think of the job role of the chef, most chefs at some point in their life will work abroad. They'll probably work on a cruise ship. They'll spend time in working in a hotel in Dubai. You know, one of my team at Digital Me, her husband is a chef from New Zealand. It's an incredibly mobile industry, but formal education stops effectively what we call like level three. And in each country, there is some form of national certification. What cities, Sitting Guilds has done working with World Chefs, which is the umbrella organisation for all the national chef associations, is to create a set of global standards. And what they were able to do then is map that at level one, two and three to national certification, but in a digital format. But they were actually able to create standards for continual professional development right up to Master Chef where there is no formal training and development. These are self-trained skills. But what digital prevention allows you to do is evidence that progression and that attainment and to give recognition where the standard is set by world chefs working with employers, but the quality of that assessment is underpinned by third party recognition from city and guilds, where they're ensuring that the assessment approach and the quality assurance approach is a valid, reliable, um, assessment, which means when someone gets that badge, you can 100% trust that. And World Chefs are already using this within their recruitment platform, that when a candidate earns a badge, they go to the top of the recruitment process for someone looking for the chef and the level of chef they want, because most of the time the national certification is stuck outside that individual um, country. Um, another one um, is a large kind of top four US insurance firm who, like I'd say Sussex Downs, have embedded this complete within their culture and said, we want to be a competency-based culture. We want to recognize um, people's achievements as they go along, whether that's on the job or through formal learning and development programs. But we need that currency to be seen and understood within our SharePoint system. And actually in this case, 
they've scrapped the organization chart. So you no longer go to search for someone based on their fit into a hierarchy. You search for someone with the project management skills and the level of experience that's been recognized through a credential to put together your project team or find someone who can answer the difficult problem you're going through. And what it starts to think of is business is being about a skilled set of people, not a lot of siloed departments where people can't respond to the world that's changing around them. Um, and, you know, the company doing that don't want to kind of share that they're neighbor. You know, it is a fantastic impact that they've not got 14,000 um, credentials in there. And the final one is just to say that lots of universities, as Deakin Digital University in, in Australia are now using this to recognize the skills people develop on the job that then goes towards a master's degree. So as you earn the credentials, that's credit towards your master's program. And you can earn that completely online with no formal learning that brings the achievement of a master's degree massively down cost. So what we're going to do now, and this literally should just take about three or four minutes, is let's design a badge that you will be able to claim after this webinar um, for your participation. So Telsey just needs to tell me what I need to do in terms of going to my screen. So do I go to desktop, is it? So I hope this will work. So if we open click meeting. Um, just to make you all aware, guys, where this is going on, I've noticed that um, I've sparked quite a lot of debate um, around um, patting colleagues on the back mm. um, with a badge. Um, and actually making sure that there is um, robust recognition in place. Um, if people want, um, what we most might do, as soon as that's been one of the hottest, hottest um, chat topics, is for us to actually release something after this webinar yeah. that actually about what that validation and recognition yeah. look like in a non-formal um, capacity, and hopefully that will inspire yeah. some ideas for you about yeah. where this belongs. Yeah, because where most of these assessments of someone's um, yeah, development takes place is using formal processes like the PDR, you know, professional yeah. development review process through assessment through to, through yeah. the marking of formal yeah. evidence. You yes. know, you build that assessment process in. This isn't just giving a badge here, there, yeah, and everywhere. Correct. We're building on a robust process. Yeah. So what we're going to very quickly do is log in um, to uh, digitalme.credly, which is the system. Just minimize. So. Hopefully, you can yeah. see. So, very quickly, going to log in, and I'm just, it just kind of gives you a feel for the sort of things that we can do. Um, and the great thing about the technology now is it's all API driven. So, integration with existing systems is what it's designed to do. But you can also work standalone um, in order to ensure that um, you can recognize. Um, Can you guys hear us now? Chris accidentally knocked the Many sound apologies, yeah. <laughs> um. So what I'm quickly going to go and do now, go to my digital new profile, which is where we're going to be. This is the issue of the badge. And obviously, I've been given permission. So it's not just a case of anyone can go in to do that. And what I'm going to go and do is create a new badge. And let's upload the design. So I'm going through quickly here. So obviously, what we want to do is make something that's very 
visual um, as an example. So we then want to make sure that the badge has a clear description. So I'm just going to go to the top. We've got a little background there. Thank you. It's to inspire yeah. me. <laughs> the, way um, the daily run I don't do. Screen. So I know this resolution looks just slightly strange on people's screens. So apologies if you can't quite see. I'll try and go through. So obviously what we want to do is um, create a clear title. So what I'll do, I'll keep this simple. So we'll We'll issue the, the the full text as we go through. So time for the badge goes here. So you can obviously clearly communicate that. What then you want to do is write the short description. And this is always writing it from the perspective of the person who's going to review the credential later down the line. So how can you communicate the value to the receiver um, as well as the individual? You can obviously pick ways that an individual can um, claim that credit. Now we're actually going to use a claim code, so we're going to issue that claim code to you after the webinar that you'll be able to then go online and claim the code. You can request in terms of building that bibliography to just requirement for evidence. So because this is just participation in a webinar, I don't think you need to really require any evidence for that because you won't have the claim code unless we give it to you. But what you would do in most cases, you would uh, accept someone saying I've got to submit some form of evidence and then you would choose the relevant person to assess that and make a judgment and again that's how you build trust into the process so we'll save that um, I can delegate authority to people um, so Chris just well. so you know it mm. seems that the screen's not showing up for a few people okay so if you could just walk through what you're doing yeah. a little bit just so they yeah get an idea. Um, so what I'm doing is setting all the permissions um, around um, who can issue the credential, the criteria and evidence that were required that some complete that we want to communicate, who can and can't give this credential out. So I can delegate authority to particular trainers or line managers who would be able to do that. Um, and obviously, we just want to um, so put in here we put the uh, detail of the learning or development that took place. Um, we would then specifically the criteria that someone has been judged against and this is where you really convey to the person receiving it the robustness the quality um, for people to make a judgment of how um, valid and reliable this particular credential is like I said, by putting things in like the ability for someone to, um, that this credential expires. So actually what we'll say is this can be live for a year. And after that, the world is going to change to the point that we should probably, um, and we'll set it in the link button so you can save that info. And let's save that. So it's a fairly simple and intuitive process to quickly and easily um, define the skills you want to communicate that someone has achieved. Um, yeah, so obviously all the text that we would put in here, and you can go into lots of detail from examples that we're happy to share. You say everything looks great, and then you obviously go into the process of, if you're connected to an LMS, you can drive the result from your LMS and automatically issue a badge that goes into someone's credit profile. Or um, we can effectively issue it, as we said, via a claim code. So for this one, we're going to actually put a claim code in. So rather than adding members, we're going to say anyone with a code. And we're going to give this code, which we'll send out to everyone, which is basically in you, hyphen webinar, credentials. What's the date today? 07? 07. 2017. And by setting that unique claim code, um, we'll make sure you can only earn it once. We're going to put a limit. I think there's 40 odd people left. So we're going to say no more than 50 people can claim this. 
and we're going to give you so if you can't see all of this um, we're going to give you a week just over a week to claim that badge um, and what we'll do in terms of adding the evidence we'll add the presentation that you went through and we'll create that claim code so effectively now that claim code is live so after the webinar we'll send you a link if you want to claim your kind of webinar particip participation credential and um, that will then allow you to begin to start your own journey of collecting recognition for your understanding and knowledge development but it should just give you an understanding of how the system can work as well so that's certainly um and from that bit it just brings us over time so apologies for Demo. so do i need and share it now? Yeah. So thank you so much for the time you've put it. Um, we're more than happy to stay on a bit longer if you want to ask um, further questions. Kelsey, anything pressing? that I, I know that we need to pick up a follow-up around how we evident and um, that any of that recognition and credentialing, um, but are there any other questions? There are a few things. Sharon just said towards the end, I can see what we might want to do with this. It's got me thinking about who might like this and be avid collectors. The role of managers and peers in validating the reliance it has on people buying in, taking part and changing behavior. In an age when we are still encouraging people to give feedback, taking it to this level will still have all the usual challenges of cultural and behavioral change. Yeah. I'm going to add another C to the list, context, credibility, and culture. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a great one. Yeah, so that's we can really pick good. those up as a follow up mm. piece. I think I think it makes a, um, a really important point. And I noticed in the chat people all oh, I think it may have been Sharon again, actually, who was also talking about, you know, how this moves mm. from business to business. And, and I think aspirationally, we would love it to get to a place where actually there are sector led skill standards which aren't necessarily nationally mm. set by awarding bodies but actually are set by the sectors that say this is the minimum standard for certain roles across sectors and then that enables you to say what's the thing that differentiates our brand from our competitor mm. brand and that enables people then to transfer from one organization to another within a sector you can say I know that you are proficient up to this level and we now need to take that so that it's relevant to our brand and it enables you to then only invest your money where it brings your brand the most yeah. amount of value and enables you to get the hit the ground a lot yeah. quicker um, with those as they come into your businesses so that is quite aspirational but it's not impossible as we see academia really imparting and, and sort of trailblazing this I think once that's much more robust globally and nationally um, on the vocational level it will be much easier then for businesses to say we can piggyback off of that and make this also the standard behavior but then it also businesses. does work within large businesses such as groups being able to transfer skills exactly. within different yeah. departments larger yeah. companies yeah. to be able to pull out skills within yeah. your own organization Absolutely. or within a group yeah agreed and certainly yeah. i mean you know that those standards are you know to me so important mm. because they're that that what gives things equivalency but actually you need and why I kind of got a little bit frustrated with all the ones that ability to localize and tailor to what you need to create what I call differentiation yeah qualifications drive standardization yeah for me credentialing is about differentiation for the individual so they can clearly pick out with trust the things that are, they're better at yeah it's differentiation for the organization because having their brand associated with the right skills and behaviors online is only positive for what they're trying to do yeah. so it differentiates the organization um, and those two things coming together give benefit to both people whereas often I see so many things in the education R&D world where it focuses on one yeah. audience whereas I think this finally allows someone reviewing credentials to clearly see differentiation in their employees or recruits um, in a way that we weren't able to do before. Agreed. Anything else Kelsey you'd like us to pick up on? Um, Emma did have a question about being able to know who else um, was on the webinar just to like continue on this conversation. Yeah. I'm not really sure how I could do that 
without sharing yeah, we can details, set up we a can LinkedIn a... group um, yeah. we can share the LinkedIn yeah. group with those that have attended the webinar yeah um, and then keep or like on Twitter chat we'll have a yeah. think about what we'll, we can we'll do. send something out with the claim code yeah. you can keep the conversation going and um, Chris and I can also monitor that so we can contribute yeah. to any conversation yeah. that's going on and it really is that culture change that that's what is critical to a lot of this and it isn't a quick fix you know if anyone thinks you're going to kind of implement credential as a quick fix it's not mm -hmm. but once you do it properly it's, it's having major impact on behavior and culture within business yeah anything else kelsey that's it mostly. There were a few stuff throughout the webinar, but I we think will most sift of those through. Yeah. And we'll sift through, we'll through the there, conversation. If I'm there was a conversation that you didn't feel was addressed, you can feel free mm. to pop that in now and we can we can handle that. Um, but we will definitely be looking through the chat and mm. addressing anything that and, and really excited that people want to keep talking yeah. about yeah. it. That's Great. amazing. So thank you for keeping the conversation going and for spending a bit of time with us today. So uh, have a lovely rest of your week and the weekend. Yeah, thank, thank you, you all everyone. so much for your time.